But you know what? We're all going to suspend all that because we have our guest, Mr. Keith Jones, NHL analyst. Keith, thank you very much for joining us today. Glad to join you guys. How's everything going there in New York? Uh, ah, good. Beautiful, beautiful day out today. Enjoying what's left of the summer. So, um, but congrats. I saw TNT announce the broadcast team. You're going to be part of the on ice crew. So that's awesome. Rest. I'm looking forward to getting started. Yeah, I am. Um, I can't, I uh, can't wait to have a new challenge. It'll be different than, um, you know, being in the studio or in the Flyers broadcast where I'm upstairs as well. So a little bit different angle yeah. to, to take in the game. So looking forward to doing it. And, uh, Looks like both of the new networks put together some pretty good teams. So, Keith, yeah, speaking, of the, speaking of the Flyers, they made, they were really active this offseason. You know, you have the you have the trade, the well, the swap from uh, Atkinson, Voracek, the trade for Rista Line in Ryan Ellis. Um, what you know, what do you make of the moves that they made, and you know, how do you really see them stacking up in the Metro heading into this season? Uh, I I think the moves were excellent, and in some ways, very surprising, just because. I wasn't sure that Chuck Fletcher would be able to pull off some of the moves that he did, including moving the contract of Jake Voracek. That was a, a pretty uh, shrewd move on his part. Voracek still a very good hockey player and an extremely good passer and playmaker, but he was making over $8 million a year, and they picked up Cam Atkinson in return. It was making less per year by about $3 million and is more of a goal scorer, something the Flyers – uh, we're in desperate need of. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, the most important thing he did was improve the blue line. Uh, should be a much more competitive group back there. Uh, Ryan Ellis is one of those players that not only is skillful offensively, but he does a great job in battling for his space and playing a really competitive game. I think that's something the Flyers missed in regards to leadership on the back end. And Rasmus Ristolainen brings a real edge to his game. I think he's got a chip on his shoulder. I think he's tired of people criticizing his numbers and going after <laughs> him statistically. And I think he wants to prove that uh, there's a lot more to his game than maybe uh, some of the uh, in-depth analysis that takes place is missing. So it'll be interesting to watch how he performs. He looks like he'd be a real good flyer. Keith, there's lots of um, players in New York that we're excited about seeing young players, but in Philadelphia, uh, how about Cam York? Is he possibly going to make this team? Probably more difficult now because of what they've added on the blue line. Um, if they had not made some of the changes, he would, without question would have started the year in Philadelphia. I think this buys him a little more time to mature and uh, you know, get his game up to a level where he can consistently perform as well as he's going to in the future. I think time in the minors for a young defenseman is probably a lot more beneficial than any other position with the exception of goaltender. So I think uh, his future is extremely bright, but it might be a little bit of a delay before Flyer fans get a consistent look at him, although he will probably play some games along the way. Now, now Keith, I, I don't think it's any secret that Carter Hart, you know, underperformed with his ability last season. Um, would you say he's the real key to the Flyers making the playoffs? If he can get back to the level that he's capable of playing of, that will be key to the Flyers having the success they want to have. He just needs to play consistently like he did going back a couple of years ago, which is not an easy thing to do. Um, I think he's more of a positionally sound goaltender that trusts or needs to trust his teammates in front of him. I think he lost some of that trust with some of the defensive deficiencies that the Flyers had last year. I think you're going to see much improved numbers on his part. And I think his overall confidence is going to grow quickly uh, just based upon what we saw two years ago. And, you know, I think the drop off last year was a lot more to do with the entire team than it was with Carter Hart as an individual. But that can be very tough on a young netminder who has not had enough NHL experience to kind of deal with some of the adversity that he dealt with last year. Now, would you assume you, you, with the Olympics this year, you would assume Carey Price, maybe Flurry, the two of the Canadian goalies, you think Carter Hart could be that third goalie in the Olympic team for them? Yeah, he'd have to have a great start. You know, based upon last year, I don't think the selection committee would have great confidence that he could, uh, you know, play to the way that they expected him to. But if you go back to two years ago, uh, he won a ton of games at home in Philadelphia, which is not an easy thing to do for a goaltender. 
And the set down can eat you up if you don't perform at a high level, and he handled that. So I think that's something that will be in his future, but I think he would have to perform extremely well at the start of the year in order to be considered yeah. for that team. Keith, when it comes to New York Rangers, everybody looks at all their moves and they just kind of dismiss it and say, oh, the Tom Wilson incident, they, they just overreacted to this. But do you think it was more just the Tom Wilson incident or that they were really getting pushed around? I think the Tom Wilson incident went a long way. I, I, I never really felt like the Rangers were pushed over. I thought Brendan Smith did a really good job on numerous occasions stepping in and providing that physical element. Um, I, I do think that that incident put them over the top. Uh, the one thing I would caution would be last year was a unique year because you played within the division multiple, and I mean multiple times, and – for you know, a, a number of years that has not been the case, and it won't be the case this year. But that animosity can build, and some of that toughness can really show itself from some of these that are a little bit bigger and stronger and meaner. I think that was an advantage for teams like Washington last season. I don't think it's an advantage this year. Uh, but I, I don't think it ever hurts to have some big boys in your lineup that give you confidence that, They've got your back if anything should take place. And when you have a superstar like Panarin, you want to make sure that he feels protected. Now, Keith, as far as the other New York team where, where my allegiances lie, um, you saw a lot of them, you know, covering uh, the playoffs in NBC Sports the last two years. Um, they had the heartbreaking loss in Game 7 to Tampa. But do you think they can get over that hump finally this year? Or you know, what do you think the Islanders are going to do this coming season? Yeah. They, they absolutely can. They have Anders Lee, of course, expected to be back. Uh, that might have been a difference maker in that series against Tampa. Tampa is not as good as they were. They don't have a third line that can compete against, you know, that workmanlike attitude of the New York Islanders. Without the third line in Tampa last year, they're not beating the Islanders. So if Tampa is the measuring stick, the Islanders should be and a little bit advanced past them. So I would feel confident if I was an Islander fan that this team can get the job done. Good management, good ownership, a good coach, and a good nucleus of players that really seem like they enjoy playing with each other. And I think you saw in the offseason how many players elected to stay uh, with mm -hmm. options to go to other cities. That tells you what a tight-knit group and culture that's been developed in uh, that Islander organization. And that's a problem for the rest of the division. Keith, I, I did. I always like to do some research, especially on all of my guests. And as I was going through uh, your stuff on uh, HockeyReference.com, I found this one game in November 1st of 1995 where you took two penalties, but you had your only career penalty shot. Do you remember that? It was against the Montreal Canadiens. It was in the third period of that game. It was against Patrick. And I hit him right in the chest with it. I was nervous I was going to miss the net. I hit him in the crest. Uh, it was not Patrick Waugh. It was a guy named Patrick Lebrecht, who only played two games in his career, uh, both for Montreal. And the good news for me right after that, the ensuing face-off, the draw was won back to me, and I took a shot and scored. So I didn't have to think about it for more than a few seconds before I could erase the bad memory of that penalty shot. So, I was yeah, going to say it. that there's a happy ending that was with that. Yeah, um, yeah that, that, that was it. That's uh, that's pretty good research on your part. But pretty well, good well, also, it's it. the, the second assist on that goal was Mark Tenorti, the father of uh, Jared Tenorti, current New York Ranger. So there you go. Tough kid. <laughs> Tough kid, just like his dad. It's remarkable Tenor got an assist. It must have bounced off somebody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And Keith, you also played for Colorado. Um, I know a lot of times, you know, media fans say there's a big difference between playing in the Western Conference and the Eastern Conference. When you played for Colorado, did you sense that that difference in the game overall? Yeah, especially during that decade. I mean, there was the Colorado Avalanche, the Detroit Red Wings, and the Dallas Stars, and all three teams were better than any team in the Eastern Conference, with the exception of the Devils, who kept poking their head in there. Um, it, was, it was pretty intense. 
And there was no question the Detroit-Colorado rivalry was incredible and uh, made a lot of hockey fans out of casual viewers because of the intensity that those games were played at. But it wasn't just the intensity. The superstar talent on both teams was incredible. Um, so I, I, there was a time when the West was a lot stronger, but I do think there's ebbs and flows with that. I think it goes back and forth. And I don't think there's a huge difference in today's game. Well, because also, by the way, right after that, you went from Colorado to the Philadelphia, and there is no bad blood between them and the New Jersey Devils or any other teams in that division. <laughs> that, 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 that's some crazy – those are some crazy games between those teams. But that, that was a – that's a fun place to play in Philadelphia as well. And I went uh, – poor me, I went from playing with Sackick and Dead Marsh and playing <laughs> with Lindros and Leclerc. What a drop-off. <laughs> Uh, Keith, before um before we let you go, I have to say I always enjoyed the banter between like you and Milbury and Ronick on NBC Sports, and and I'll miss them. But I'm looking forward to uh, TNT and ESPN. But while you're with the NBC Sports, when Milbury was on, did you guys ever like give him a little jabs and like uh, you know critique his trades? Like, oh, what are you thinking trading Luongo and give him the business at all behind the scenes? There, there, there's a few people that tried that with Mike, but you're not going to get far with it with him. He is. Uh... He does not take kindly to that. He, he has, he's, a, he's a very prideful man, and uh, we're, we're still good friends to this day, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that I did not say those things to him. But, uh, he, he, he has a great sense of humor. He's a really bright guy. Uh, I know Islander fans want to kill him, and he knows it as well, but uh, he, he's a good man, and uh, I'll, I'll defend him to the end. He was a good buddy of mine. Well, that's why if Zdeno if Zdeno Chara plays this year and happens to land on the Islanders, it'll be like land in full circle. That would be cool. I, I would love to see that. That'd be great to have him back there. And Mike yeah. was like a stepfather to to Big Z. I mean, Big Z would come over and have dinner, and you know, he knew, grew up with some of his kids. I mean, yeah. those those guys had a, re- a really good relationship back in the day. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, right, tidbit: uh, Big Z was on the ice for Wayne Gretzky's final goal. You know, I didn't know that. Yeah. Great. That's Great. fun fact. Yeah. All right, well, Keith, thanks for joining us. I'm, I'm really eager to get the season started and the ESPN and TNT broadcast and seeing you. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But thanks for taking some time to join us today. Happy to do it, guys. Great job. We'll, we'll catch Thank up you soon. Very much. Love to have you Thanks back. You, guys. you got Bye. it. Anytime. Bye. Bye. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.